clearly we haven't got this garden space, the main garden space here on the Daddy Curbs farm prepared for planting this spring like I had hoped. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three alternative methods that I'll be using to grow our veggies. One of the methods is container gardening. In this case, specifically, it will be in the green stock stackable gardens. I think they're beautiful and wonderful. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna be reusing these containers and stacking them up on the edge of the barn porch. The first thing I did was just get them all out, give them a good cleaning, specifically in the green stock gardens. Uh, they, they drain very well from top to bottom, but you have to make sure the drain holes are open. So I just hosed them out, made sure the center hole and the openings on the bottom are clear. More importantly, for the green stalks, you have these watering discs that fit between each tier and they have smaller holes. So I just went through and made sure that each of those holes were open, not clogged up with soil from the previous season. When you get your green stalks, if you order green stalks for your vertical growing container gardens, they come uh, packed with everything you need in the box to get started, except for your soil and seeds. Well, they do often put a pack of seeds in there, but you're probably gonna want a variety of seeds. So in this case, we're gonna take the wheeled base out of this box that I had unused in the shed, and we're gonna use it here on the porch for these three systems that we're setting up today. reasons we really like the wheeled bases because in some circumstances for example when Luke is throwing his cornhole we're gonna need to wheel these things out of the way for a few minutes and then put them back when he's finished remember in your container gardens any container garden your soil that you put in there is all that your plants have those plants in your containers don't have the benefit of putting roots down into the soil where there may be extra uh, nutrition for them. So what you give them is all they have. This is a good bag soil with compost. I amended in some additional organic fertilizers just to give the plants a little extra nutrition and boost to grow the biggest veggies that we can possibly get. I hope. Where's my seeds? Oh, thank you. All right, so Luke has just handed me my seeds. In each of the Greenstock Vertical Gardens this year, I'm gonna do root crops. So carrots and radishes, I have several varieties of radishes and one variety of carrots. This entire system is gonna be carrots. Historically on the Daddy Cripps farm, I've had marginal luck with carrots. The one season that I had the best luck of all was in a green stock. And I think it's because the soil is more controlled, it's more loose, the watering is more even, and these pockets are so deep that the carrots never actually even hit the bottom. It was a really good season for carrots. We're gonna try it again. Carrot seeds are so small that uh, they just get scattered on the top. And we have uh, six times five, so 30 deep pockets for carrots. We're gonna to try to get these two packets of carrots spread evenly between all 30 pockets. Now I'm just gonna take a pinch. Sometimes I actually mix the seeds into soil to break them up, loosen them up so I can spread them out more evenly. But this time I'm just gonna take a pinch that should be, you know, probably maybe up to 10 seeds, but I'm gonna to try to just spread them out on top here. And then once I get them spread out, I'm just gonna kind of loosen the soil a little bit like this. And they don't need to be buried deep. They're just gonna go just under a little bit. 
and then when they get watered in, they should set in nicely. The beauty of a system like this is that it is watered from the top down. You just fill this watering top piece uh, up to the level that it shows it's marked inside, but this is five tier, so we're pretty much gonna fill it up. I will, because it is uh, freshly planted seeds, I will mist each pocket as well, just to make sure that they get water from the top really well. But this is a garden planted with a lot of carrots. I really hope that at the end of this season I can show you a magnificent amount of carrots harvested from this. Another way that I'll be gardening this year, uh, since the main garden is not ready, is in this horseshoe shaped raised bed. This is the one that we built with the 4-H group and it is a 10 foot wide by 20 foot long structure with the bed going in a U shape all the way around. It had a lot of weeds in it, so I weed whipped those down. Now I'm laying cardboard and I'll be filling it up, hopefully to the top, with new compost, or actually old compost that's been sitting in the back. And then we're gonna plant some of our peppers and tomatoes in this space. One trick to fill raised beds is to put logs in the bottom of the raised bed. Now, I didn't want to put it all the way in the bottom because I want some nice deep areas, but I did have a stack of rotten logs over here and I thought it'd be good to go ahead and put them around the outside. That'll reduce the amount of soil I need, but also as this gets uh, wet, the logs will absorb moisture and the logs will help regulate the water in the soil. So I'll fill this up, cover those logs, and as those logs degrade, they'll be releasing nutrients into the soil, but also holding moisture. Every foot along these quarter inch hoses is a dripper. So uh, on the middle hose that's running right down the middle of the bed, every other dripper I'm gonna plant a pepper plant. Well, that was a tongue twister. And that way, um, that'll be dripping right on the roots, right around the base of the plant. to dig a hole. Yep, you do have to dig a hole. Good job. That looks like a pretty good hole right there. Do you remember how to hold the plant? Beautiful. Good job. Kind of squeeze the... There you go. Oop. Okay, get that down in there. And push the soil back up around it. Okay, let me, let's get some of this soil and put it up around the base of that plant there. Peppers don't mind if their stems are a little bit buried. Just like that. Good job. Then we'll make sure this dripper is running right there. So when we turn the hose on, it'll get watered. I'm going to use the leg of the cage to hold that dripper in close to the plant. These cages are for tomatoes are just about worthless, but I like to use them. I like to keep them. A lot of people throw them away after the first season. Are you doing this one? And then I take them and I use them for peppers. Purple Beauty 
And what's these? Uh, YOLO Wonder. Another option for your garden, if you don't have a nice in-ground or raised bed garden, are just containers. A lot of times people throw these types of containers out. They consider them one use or single use plastic container and you can find them you know, on, online somewhere. We happen to have a bunch of these that were left over in a neighboring greenhouse where we are privileged enough right now to be able to use this space. So we're gonna be planting potatoes in containers here today just because I like potatoes in containers and I've had pretty decent success in the past but I've learned a few things so now I think I'm really confident this year I'm gonna have better success so we're gonna get this garden here planted in potatoes and one container I'm gonna put some of these uh, sweet potatoes in just to have a little something extra in here we got our seed potatoes from a local feed store and so I have two varieties today. I'll be planting red Lasota and uh, Kennebec. And both, both varieties have been sitting long enough to um, have uh, chitted, C-H-I-T, uh, which is what, just the growth of the eyes on the potato. I went through, got all these containers set up, and I filled them up with at least three or four inches of soil in the bottom. Now I'm just gonna use the water here to get that bottom soil wet and then we're gonna put the potatoes in. Containers are really great for just about any type of gardening. You can plant you know, your, your potatoes, your carrots, your radishes, tomatoes, peppers. This is a really versatile way and really probably the most inexpensive way so far that we've talked about for gardening because you can use uh, recycled containers or very inexpensive containers that you find at your local hardware or big box store. I don't want this to turn into a how to grow potatoes video because quite honestly I'm still experimenting over the seasons to make sure I, I truly do know how to do it myself. I have learned a few things uh, so I'm going to share some thoughts. If you have um, constructive criticism for growing potatoes, please put them in the comments because I'd love to continue learning how to grow my garden. So what I'm going to do here today is I have three or four inches at least on the bottom of soil. I'll be placing them uh, with the eyes facing up. And these larger containers like this, I'll be putting probably two uh, per container. And I'm just going to place them in there like that. And then we're going to cover them with six inches of soil. On some of these wider containers, I'll probably put three potatoes. Now that we have the potato, the bottom moistened and the potatoes in place, we're gonna be putting compost soil over the top. There's a butterfly in here. Sorry. Um, we're gonna put about six inches of soil over the top of the potato. put just a little bit more in there I want some lip uh, left in here because when that plant starts growing up and those potatoes start breaking the surface I want to be able to put a little more soil in here to cover those up because we don't want that to be exposed to the Sun so right here that's about six inches over and then we'll put a little more in when that plant grows up above the top of that rim one of the things that I know that I've messed up in the past by, uh, in how I grow potatoes, everywhere you look online, they talk about hilling the potatoes. So I always thought 
that you would put the potato on the ground, cover it with just a little bit of soil, and then when it grows up, cover it with more, it grows up, you cover it with more. Well, what I found out through more research and talking to other people is that that's not the way it works with potatoes. They wanna be about six inches under the ground at the very beginning. The hilling is not to grow more potatoes, it really is just to protect the potatoes that are breaking the surface of the ground from the sun. Another thing I'm going to experiment with this year is putting banana peels in the potato pots because potatoes need potassium. I know that bananas have a lot of potassium in them, so I'm just going to see if putting a peel in with the potatoes make a difference. I don't have enough for all of them, but that's actually good because that will give me maybe a view in whether this helps or not. I don't know. I do have mostly Kennebec potatoes on this side, and so I'm just going to drop a peel right in beside that potato. We've been saving these peels and putting them in a baggie in the refrigerator. And so now that we have time to plant, we can put them in the garden. Well, there you have it three ways that i'm growing this spring because my main garden is not ready containers small manageable raised beds and vertical stackable growing gardens like the green stack garden all three have pros and cons but i think it's better to just get to it get it done and do something instead of wishing that you did later in the season thank you so much for sharing this gardening time with me here on the daddy curbs farm i do believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you so much for being a part of my story through this video and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.